Alright guys, and welcome to episode 11 of this Road to Glory series with Salford City on FIFA 20. Last episode were an unmitigated disaster then, weren't it? Let's be honest. Let's have a look at the calendar and remind ourselves of them results. So we rounded out November by starting with a 4-0 loss at home to Swindon Town. Followed that up with a 0-0 draw at home against Macclesfield. And then we ended the episode losing and thus getting knocked out at FA Cup by Colchester 2-0 also at home we're going to try and turn that around this episode and we are going to make some changes to the starting lineup to compensate uh, we are starting at home against exeter city we will follow that up away at bradford and end the episode at home against crew alexandra now in terms of the squad as you can see from looking at that we have brought Pia Gianni in at centre back because Burgess had a nightmare last episode he made mistakes in all three games didn't he that cost us Threlkeld also comes in at right back in the place of Wiseman because he is actually higher rated um, Wiseman only a tiny bit faster but also old so his stats were declining and as you can see the big man returns up front it's Manny Disaruwe playing as a target man hopefully that will help turn things around uh, in terms of comings and goings we have added quite a few players to transfer list Ewan McFarlane the young goalkeeper he is one of them he's transfer listed uh, Nathan Pond is transfer listed we are keeping quite a lot of the midfielders Jones he's transfer listed Joey Jones is on his way out hopefully uh, we are keeping Lloyd and Towel. Whitehead also stays, even though I don't play him that much, because we do need some first-team players to stick around when we reach, like, international duty. Doyle, yeah, Alex Doyle's transfer listed. Shelton, his transfer's already arranged. Smith isn't transfer listed. It's mostly strikers, so we are keeping Desiruwe, Suan and Rooney with a the young lone Romanian striker coming in in January, but... Moncrief is transfer listed, Jonsian is transfer listed, Devante Rodney's on his way out, Luke Armstrong is transfer listed, Jake Beasley is transfer listed, and Rory Gaffney. So six strikers that are never going to get game time are all transfer listed. And hopefully, if we sell these guys, we're going to have some money to look at the youth players that we are waiting on. Now, we did, I believe, get the scout report back and all of the keepers that we found since the first report were just not good enough. Peter White, his potential rating has dropped. It's now 68 to 88, whereas I believe it was like 61 to 91. But we are still keeping a look at him because it could end up being somewhere like 78 to 88. But as we said last episode, this guy, Jonathan Robinson, 71 to 91 potential, that is the guy that we want. And that's why we need to raise some transfer funds. Because we want to be able to sign him on a free transfer as soon as possible, really. The only other thing to note is that on the transfer hub, we have had it suggested that we look at this guy in comments. Uh, Andre de Jong, a free transfer, is from New Zealand. 23 year old can play in centre forward, cam or striker. So he would possibly be rotation with Richie Towell if he's deemed good enough to play for us when that scout report returns. Skill moves and weak foot are not great, but I'm not too concerned with that as we're down in lower leagues. His stats don't look too bad. Uh, I had a quick look at the possible ranges. He might be useful if his overall rating is high enough. I'm also waiting for the scout report to come back still on this guy, one low Koulibaly, because if you look at the ranges on some of his stats, they actually look really good. His physicals, anyway. Uh, if he is quick, if he is up the upper end of that potential acceleration range, he might be useful as rotation or backup to Toure, so we'll wait for that to return as well. But it does hinge a lot of this on whether we can sell some of them players. With that said though, it is time for game number one in this episode. We are at home against Exeter City, and this is where we need to start turning things around. So we have already discussed the changes for our lineup then. It is Threlkeld, Piergiani and Disaruwe returning to the starting lineup. Pier Gianni, I hope to God that he can play better than Burgess did last episode because he made so many mistakes. Height is the thing that worries me though. Exeter's lineup. 
we'll have to wait and see what formation they play. Again, there's no real players that sort of stick out to me as players I know. It is a 4-4-2, a traditional uh, English league formation. Right, come on, lads. You're in front of your own fans. You've been disappointing so far this season. You are one. It's Micklebust onto Towel. He finds Figuera. It's back to Towel. Micklebust again. Manny, hold that up. He can't. Can he feed Towel on? He can and shots off and it's side netting only. Threlkeld win that in air. He does. And it's picked out by Figuera. He's out wide to Torre. Cutting inside. Oh, Towel dispossessed. No, he's not by Dodd. He keeps odd of it. That is on to Micklebust. Manny gets his shot off. Oh, what a start. Manny, 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 you big, beautiful bugger. A little bit lucky then. I thought we were going to get dispossessed when Towel picked up ball, but it is Manny tucking that away right in the corner. Justifying his return to the first team as well. Back to Moxie. Atangana coming forward. Dancers past two men. Here's Jay. Atangana goes for a back heel. Ball falls to Seymour. Oh, well won by Figuera. Given away sloppily, though, in defence. And well done, Leatheran. Big save from the keeper. It's first corner at game. What can Sparks do? Looks to put it in the middle. Well won in the air. Nobody to pick that up, though, because there's no other word. Sigurdarsson were the only player forward, but he was too far forward looking at that. And Jay, oh, back of the net. That lead didn't last long, did it? Exeter have found an equaliser. Kind of came from nowhere. We were running away from goal, and then suddenly space opens up, and it's tucked away just inside post. And it's Manny looking to get through on goal. Keeps older it. Can he feed Sigurdarsson in? No, Sweeney with the ball back to his keeper. And Ward hefts it upfield. Header won, but picked up by Torre. There's Piergiani, still forward. Figuera. Figuera goes back to Torre. He finds Disarue looking for a through ball. We're not going to get on that. We are. But Ward with the save. Did nobody want to get that ball then? Mickle bust. Fires it forward for Towel. Oh, he couldn't feed it through for Manny. Mickle bust tries to win it back. Here's Jay again. Forward for Seymour. And it's over everybody. And Torre picks that up. We can attack. No, cut out by Randall. Next to forward with numbers and Leathering. Didn't need to get called into the saving end because it goes wide, but I would have preferred the keeper to save it, even though it was going wide, just to give me a bit of confidence. That's going to be a free kick. No, Exeter get to play on. Advantage played by Ref. That is in the box. Cut out. Here's Threlkeld. Knocked forward. Chance to counter a bit. There's Manny. Walker. Carry on making your run, lad. He does, but I think he's, he's going to be offside. No, he's not. Oh, Towel couldn't get his shot off. Sweeney got a foot in to block it. Just enough to put him off. Hogan headed that straight down at the defen uh, the opposition defender. But we are still in possession. There's Towel trying to look for Manny behind. He gets his shot off and it's off the post. Keeper didn't react then. I think if that had have been an inch or two further towards middle at goal, that would have been Manny's second at game. It would have been very lucky, admittedly. We have played two and a half minutes. Well, there we go. We've now played the three minutes of injury time. At half time, it's Salford 1, Exeter 1. Jay again picks it up. Randall. Jay looking to get inside the box. And they have done with Seymour instead. And Leather and flails at it. But can't do up to stop it. A little ball played into space. As defender took a step forward. And it just gets striker all opportunity he wanted. Leather and flapping at it. But he had already stepped forward. He did have an overlap. Here's Micklebust. Towel. Looking for Walker. Is it offside? It were. Thought I'd just beat it. And Torre gets this upfield. Knocked on for Micklebust. The one youth player we've got in team. He's not got that many options. Has to fire it forward from Manny. Towel. 
picked it up, trying to hold it up. And is Micklebust, is he going to get a chance to shoot? It is, but it's blocked. And on second time we're asking, Micklebust bangs it in back at net. We have grabbed the equaliser. So we took the lead, then went behind, and now we are back all squared again. Towel just about holds the ball up enough. And I thought Micklebust had stuffed it up when he took that extra touch. Luckily, the bounce is kind to him, and he does get his shot off. Perhaps should have expected more from keeper, but that young youth player tucks it straight in corner. To Saru wait, looking for Towel. He's going to turn. There's nobody with him, so he's going to have to do this alone. If he does it, or oh, at the last minute, you could even see the leg coming backwards then for the shot. Hogan to Threlkeld. He's looking for Walker, finds him. Walker on for Micklebust. Towel in space. Oh, it's a great save by Ward. We're making our first sub at game, then it is Manny going off and Kim Su An coming on. It's like for like with Target Man coming off for another Target Man. Can our big South Korean help us out here? He has scored a few for us so far. Is he going to get his nut on it? He is. Oh, cleared off the line by Defender. Tilson again. Cut out. Well, by Figuera. That's Towel. Back on for Figuera. Walker, there's not got anybody to aim for. He has it. Back stick. Oh, towel heads wide. Should have possibly let that go for uh, Sigardison then. Who had some space at the back. Well won by towel though. And there's Suan holding it up. Oh, I say well holding it up, but then Moxie just back straight into him. And that's off at top. Well won by Sparks in air. Falls to Forte. Williams. And easy save for Leather and in end. And well done, Hogan. Is this a chance? No, because Towel can't control it. And he, well, he does win it back, admittedly. Oh, Suan gets ball away. We're looking for Towel, but he tried finding Walker, and Walker weren't ready. We are in injury time. Three minutes to play. And don't no you are joking we concede in the second minute of three such a poor goal to concede when we've been attacking threat for the majority of this second half. it were a beautiful goal by a goal scorer but i am so disappointed nicely tucked though and that curve an absolute banger of a goal i won't deny it and it's ref's whistle so we don't even get a chance to attack I am so disappointed that we conceded it last 30 seconds of injury time Salford 2, Exeter 3 I just can't believe that we conceded in the death like that especially when we were looking you know, we were pushing weren't we we are pushing for a winner Evans has gone up to 55 rated with latest round of training still not quite good enough for first team action but uh, it's nice to see him improving nonetheless. Danny Whitehead has come to us and told us you have made no attempt to resolve any issues regarding the desire to leave the club. We do not like the discontent amongst the team and so we have agreed it would be better to sell him as soon as possible. Please look for an appropriate buyer. So we are being forced into selling Danny Whitehead by the board. That's an interesting new feature. He is transfer listed. So they must have transfer listed him on my behalf. All right, well, looks like we are going to be losing Whitehead as well. If that does happen, we will have to sign up uh, the kid from the youth team that I was saying looks like he might be ready. Uh, let's remind myself of his name. Youth Academy. Olav Larson, that's the chap. Yeah, we uh, might have to call him up. Well, he is 65 rated already, so he is actually pretty good, but he is a left mid, which is the problematic area. Decent agility, though, and decent balance. It's just not that quick. Ball control and dribbling are also decent, so he might actually be all right playing in midfield out of position, although he's not the biggest player. But we'll wait to see if we have to do that first. I'm, still di I'm disappointed that the board seem to be taking it into their own hands to... Uh, make changes to my team but I suppose it is fairly realistic because that happens quite a lot in football doesn't it we've just seen an email as well that we are at risk of losing 10 players so I'm guessing there's a lot of players out of contract 
All right, offer for Nathan Pond, 74 grand. That's not going to add much to transfer budget, is it? It is lo below what he is worth, though, so I'll negotiate it and try and get a little bit more. We did also agree to sell Rory Gaffney for uh, 350 grand to Whistler Krakow. So hopefully he will agree to leave and that gives us a bit of money to play with. Right, let's see if we can uh, squeeze a little bit more money out for this offer for Nathan Pond. Well, we did squeeze a bit more out of him. We basically got him to offer his valuation, which is 100 grand. Not that it's going to make a massive amount of difference to the budgets because the uh, board won't allocate the full amount to us, but even if they allocate 50 grand of that, it's better to get a little bit more than a little bit less in it. We are going to have to have a look at players that we're at risk of losing. A lot, Some of them are first team players, so we might have to look at that. I don't know whether we've actually got enough money to offer contracts to these. That's uh, it's on financial, I believe. Contract, seven months left. Right, Chris Neal is his player that we could do with keeping around, but it's not that. Let's see, Leathering also, seven months. Right, I'm going to take a little bit of time to try and sort these contract issues out and see if we can keep hold of some of these players. Well, we only managed to sort out the contracts of a few players. We still have quite a lot of players that we are going to have to wait until we've got some money to sort. Because see, Burgess is on loan anyway, so that's not a massive issue. I'm tempted to end his loan and just save the money that we are paying him a week. Um, in terms of players that we want to keep, I mean, there's a lot of them are the players that we've got transfer listed. Uh, the first important one is Liam Hogan. At 30 years old, he is our captain and number one defender. Wiseman is also transfer listed, so not a massive problem. Maynard is a player we want to keep around. Walker is first team, and I would really like to get his contract sorted out if possible. Um, and Whitehead is also transfer. Yeah, I think there's just Walker and Hogan are the two that we have to sort out. But we are going to have to wait for some money to come in. Have a look at the rest of these emails. We had a transfer offer for Pond. That's the second. That's the one that we've already dealt with. We have got them to agree to pay a bit more. We've had a match rescheduled. It's the Walsall game that was meant to take place on 4th of January. And it's been moved to end of January. And scout saying he's found all he could. And that is the last scouting update. Right, so we've dealt with as many of those contracts as we can. And we're just going to have to hope that we can get them to agree new deals once January hits and we bring some money in. That's one of the problems, isn't it? Starting with a lower league team. You haven't got all the money in the world to play like you do with a Premier League team or equally sized squad. Oh well, we'll uh, wait to see what happens when we get some of that January money. For now, it's time to move forward and play game number two which is tomorrow. Uh, we have got... Ah, this scout report has returned on De Jong. We've had a transfer offer for Wiseman of 82 grand. So they obviously know that his uh, contract's coming up, but he's only valued at 100 grand anyway. So I'll negotiate this one and try and get at least his valuation. All right, we've accepted the offer for Wiseman. We've got five grand more than his valuation. £105,000 accepted to get Scott Wiseman off the books. He's 34 and made quite a lot of mistakes from playing. His stats have decreased as well because of his age. He did start at 61 rated. He's now at uh, 62 rated. Sorry, he's now 61. Getting rid of some of these players is going to do us a favour though. Right, let's have a look at the scout report that has returned for De Jong in the transfer hub. This is the guy that's potentially an option at Cam. He's only 59 rated. He's not good enough. He's not going to uh, replace Towel. His stats aren't too great either. I'm trying to be realistic, but you know when we've got Richie Towel at 69 rated in behind striker, I don't really want to be replacing him with a 59 rate, uh, rated Cam. Shame. Right, I will do the press conference and then it's time to travel away to Bradford. Bradford's starting lineup. Again, nobody that I can say that I recognise. Although Clayton Donaldson, I'm sure he used to play for Sheffield United. It is a 4-4-2 again. 
struggled last game against 4-4-2, didn't we? We remain unchanged after the last game. Micklebust actually got man of the match last game, which is nice to see. The uh, young youth player from Norway. Come on then, lads. We got so close last game, and it really is about time we overturned this run of poor form. Well done, Manny. It's Patrick on to Divine again. He goes out wide to Ishmael. It's Vaughan. Ishmael, he's got a run. And it does fall to Vaughan on the edge of the box, but his volley goes miles over. Well, cut out. Well done, Toure. And then he lumps it forward, and it's cut out in turn by Divine. And shot on goal, and leather and wow. Conceding from outside the box. It's not what we want. We had that problem quite a lot on 19, didn't we? Long shots from outside at box. That were a really well took goal, actually. <laughs> Some spin on it outside at foot. But yeah, we had that problem on FIFA 19 in Tottenham career mode. Every shot from outside box pretty much went in. Down line, Frelkeld, you need to be careful. Is Colville get past him? Ball play through middle, and Piergiani cuts that out. Figuera on for Sigurdarsson, wins the ball, loses it on the second time are asking though. Manny looking to try and get behind. Manny, yes, keeper, horrible mistake. Bradford not got the skills for sweeper keeper. And I accidentally skipped the replay. We are going to take a look at that though, because that were a bit uh, calamitous, weren't it, for Bradford. There we go, concentrate on ball. So we'll rewind it, ball played off at top. Defence don't react quick enough. Keeper looks to come out, sees Manny running at him. And just had to be done, didn't it? Manny, if he'd have missed that, it would have been a shocker. Fortunately, he didn't miss it, and we are back level again. It's nice to see some mistakes working in my favour, though, instead of costing us. There's Colville. Ball does get past. It's down the wing. Colville again. 24 minutes on clock and there we go Bradford have retook the lead straight from kickoff our defence collapses maybe that's just karma evening score a little bit because that goal really unfortunate for Bradford but Piergiani I think that were it looks like it just lets his man get straight in front of him and he's not got the height to compete he's only 6 foot tall Leathering flapping at it comes out wide to Threlkeld and keeps order it through middle for Figuera to Torre Sigurdarsson we'll try and play it in box he can do and oh nearly scored from across then that was not far off even though it was meant to be trying to pass it to Manny it's Piergiani for Torre Torre is going to bomb up this wing Manny and oh, referee blows his whistle as we play the pass at the break. It is Bradford 2, Salford 1. Ball comes in, leather and punch, well done. And possible counter attack here. It's Towel out to Sigurdarsson. He looks to come inside, finds Manny. Oh, Manny. Weren't quick enough on turn. I know he's a big guy. He's there to play target man instead, but should have been slightly quicker then. Because we could have found the perfect pass. Micklebust and towels offside in it. We'll go for the shot anyway, and it does go in net, but oh, it will walk her. We're already offside. It's Vaughan muscling the defender off the ball. There's Scannell. Oh, Frelkel just turned inside out, and then luckily Hogan does win it. It falls back to McCartan. Deal with that. Oh, we don't. I said deal with it, not avoid it. That is 3-1. Why do our defenders just flap at the ball every time it comes near them? They try to head it, but it's just... It's like a salmon leaping out at water with no aim whatsoever. Sandwiched between both of our centre-backs then, and Vaughan still gets his head to it. Towel. Forward for Micklebust. Towel looking to make a run. He does. Tuck it in. Oh, great save by the keeper. Should have buried that. We're going to play this short. It's Threlkeld, the right back. And can't do anything with it, even though we do 
play it short and win the ball. Threlkeld on for Pierre Gianni. I honestly thought he were going to miss that ball then. Here's Sigardison. Pass gets off. It is Towel. Back of the net. No, it's wide. Again, Richie Towel. How many times are you going to come close without actually putting ball in net? Going for a shot. Oh, it was blocked by Henley. We are in injury time. If we're going to do this, we're going to have to do it well. <laughs> Towel. That's not your best work, Sunshine. Walker picks it up and it's Wood that hacks it upfield. Threlkeld wins the header. Falls to Walker. Nicholbust picks it up and that's the referee's whistle. 94 minutes played in total. It is Bradford 3, Salford 1. There's confirmation that Gaffney has gone. 250 grand that adds to our transfer budget. We've also had an offer from Moncrief of 88,000. He's valued at 120, so I'm going to try and get a little bit more. Deal agreed then for Kamar Moncrief for 108 grand. I am just wanting to get rid of some of these players that we don't want to keep that are just eating up wages. We're going to do the player development with the training. We all reload the previous session. Larson has grown to 66 rated. I'm getting more and more tempted to call him up with each training session. Especially since we can, man, we might not even be able to afford to call him up at minute because of how little money we've got in budgets. We have got a wage budget of thirty-seven pounds. So it tells me that we are not going to be able to afford to call him up yet. I know we can promote him to the senior team. I think we're going to do that because we are losing some players in uh, the next few weeks. It might be an idea to put him on the bench and see what you can do. Whitehead is a player that wants to leave. So we will put Larson on the bench. He's 66 rated. It's almost as good as Sigurd who who's our best winger. We've got one more game to play this episode. And we have dropped down to 20th in league. Can we beat Crew? who are around us? Yeah, we know we're at risk of losing players. We should stop telling us that we're at risk. We know. We've just got to get to January so that we've got money coming in. are one spot above us at the minute. We've got a transfer offer for Whitehead, 290 grand. It's valued at 425, so that is ridiculously low. We are going to negotiate that. Well, they accept us straight away when I asked for 450, which tells me that I should have probably asked for a little bit more, but it's above his valuation and he's running out of contract and desperate to leave. So, uh, yeah, I won't complain. That offer also was made on Christmas Day, so apparently I work on my birthday. That's interesting. We are getting closer and closer to the January window. We desperately need it, don't we, for that injection of new blood that's already coming in and cash. Here we go then, the Boxing Day game, the final game of this episode. Crew are one point and one place above us at minute, but we do have a game in hand over them and 18th place Carlisle. We've got to win this game. If we don't win this game, it is not looking good. I can see us getting sacked at the end of the season. Although as manager rating hasn't suffered too much, it's at 74. It's not the lowest it's been. Still trying to turn it around though with this game. There's a winter wonderland in Salford then. It's a snow-covered pitch. We make one change, which is Cameron Burgess coming back in, in defence, in the place of Carl Piagiani. We remain unchanged otherwise. Whether we can uh, get the job done this time is another question entirely though we have already played crew once this season and I want to say that we beat them in the Thank game where we won all three games it was a 4-3-3 come on then lads he's not got many options he finds Threlkeld back to Walker Walker to Micklebust or oh, cut out by Green manages to find the pass it's Micklebust on again Finds Manit onto Towel. Looking to get him behind. We do. Oh, dispossessed right at the last minute. And Yaskalain and gratefully clutches that to his chest. Micklebust back onto Micklebust again. Does well to turn. Gets his shot off, but he drags it wide. That were well done right up until the final moment, weren't it? It were always spinning wide. Porter gets past his man. 
Well done, Frelkeld. Nickel bust. On to Figueira. Sees Towel making a run. He finds Manny. Take your shot, kid. And that's back of the net. Get in. And I skipped the replay by mistake. I'm that used. I've been playing so much Ultimate Team this last week that I'm used to tapping the uh, shoulder buttons as soon as I score to get cracking with game. It's green with the corner. It's over everybody. You get the header in. Sigurdarsson is going to pick it up. His conditions, of course, not going to affect him. He plays, well, he's from Iceland. So cold conditions, not too bad. Walker plays a nice ball looking for Manny. And that's wide. Disarue, he probably had time to take another touch then as he were running in box. He kind of reacted as if the defender were closing him down, but he had space. No, we don't head it down, but we do pick it up. Here's Sigurdarsson coming forward. Disarue back to Sigurdarsson. He finds Manny again. Towel's going to be offside, I think. Oh, keep her out to it anyway. And Towel is rolling around in snow. Thought we'd won the ball back, but we didn't. Do that time, though. Nickel bust onto Figuera. So that wide to Sigurdarsson. He knocks it on for Toure, who's marauding forward. Oh, why didn't you play that square? Don't really matter, because we are going to pick it up. Here is Burgess, the uh, on-loan defender. Hogan. On for Figuera. One back to Towel. That's Toure getting forward. And great save by Jaskalainen. Through time. middle. Picked up by Towel. To Micklebust. Manny is in space, but we go for Walker instead. Can we find the pass? No, it's blocked by Lancashire and he hoofs it away. And that's referee's whistle. We are going in. 1-0 up at half time. Can't pass to your Walker. You'd have been offside, mate. Oh, Manny. Lost ball. Wins it back. But loses it again. We are a poor pass. That's green. Towel went in. Field. Picker in. Here's Kirk. I'm going to try and take it out wide. Oh, big block. Leathering could have tried to get that and stop it from going out. And we are going to make a surprising change now. We are bringing youth player Larson on. It's Richie Towel that goes off. It's Jones. Well done, Figuera. Mickle bust. That's on to Larson. He's in some space in middle now. Finds Manny. Returns to him. Played through for Micklebust. Is he going to get his shot off? He is, but it's wide again. Can they get down the wing? They can. And they're going to get the ball in the box. Well cut out, though. And Larson is the one that fires it upfield. And let Manny keep hold of that for now. Which he does well. Don't lose it now, mate. I've just uh, been saying nice things about you. Here's Larson. Spots the run and Mickle bust. Oh, and he went for a shot then. He perhaps had space to try and uh, get a little bit closer to goal. There's Porter. And I'm going to drag Hogan back in defence. And that might be... Oh, well. <laughs> There's Cruz's uh, equaliser. <laughs> it is Griffiths, the substitute. Dragged Hogan back, hoping that he would help cover in middle. But instead... The attacker managed to get above everybody. Ball falls to uh, Griffiths and Leatheran should have done better. One in the air by Walker. Lost by... Nope. One by Micklebust. It's fine. It's picked up again by Micklebust. He goes back to Figuera. That's Torre. Looks to find a pass to Manny. It's Larson. Oh, he's blasted it in back of the net. In We have... Played more than the two minutes of injury time, but Larson does find the goal. We have rescued this game, and it is young youth player Larson that does it. What a nice little pass, though, through to Manny. He played a through ball just as Larson were running into the box. Blasted in bottom corner. How close would keeper to getting an hand to it? He nearly got his fingertips on that. And finally, we get a little bit of luck in this episode come on ref blow your whistle there we go referee's whistle does bring it to a close we end the episode on a high it's Salford 2 crew Alexandra 1 and at least we end the uh, episode on a high don't we I've just seen that Pond's talks have broken down so he won't be joining IK Sirius but there were two teams in for him so I'm not 
too concerned. Uh, scout report for the month. That's the one we've already seen. That's fine. Uh, yeah, at least we end the episode on a high. I'm glad that we managed to turn it around towards end, although we are still in 19th. Cambridge equal ways on points. We are. It's a good job you can't get relegated because we would be fighting relegation, but, you know, as we're the lowest division in England. I said it was going to be a struggle, though, didn't I? Hopefully, January will help sort things out a little bit for us. We get so as new signings on loan will turn up, and we get a bit of money to invest in... Well, contract rules for the most part, but hopefully bringing on the young goalkeeper as well. Just keep clinging to that. We have got one game remaining in December, which is Oldham Athletic on the 29th. We do play New Year's Day though, so only uh, three days between them games. In fact, January looks like a very, very busy month. But it brings me at the transfer window and a chance to make some changes, doesn't it? We are going to leave things there, though, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you twat that thumbs up button and twat that subscribe button to keep up with content on channel. Social media links are all in the description below. Follow me there's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Feel free to follow me on any of them. And other than that, guys, cheers for watching. And as usual, I'll see you next episode.